Hey yo, what it do? It's your boy J. Lou, and you guys are just in time for another video. In this video, what I plan on covering is the reason why I choose to use Wave Builders Cocoa and Shea Pomade. I know a lot of people have been asking me the question. A lot of people also bash Wave Builder, but I'm going. I'm gonna go into the reason why I choose to use this pomade, as well as uh, go into the details of the product. So let's not waste any time and let's jump straight into it. All right. Whenever you're considering buying products, whatever the case is, you always want to buy something that will benefit your hair you know if you don't you'll end up wasting money and you'll also end up messing your hair up with wave builder just to go into the the, the the primary concern that a lot of people try to bash the company for is because they choose to use petroleum in their products I'll make a video on the truth about petroleum and whether or not you should use it or consider using a product with petroleum in it but as of today this video is gonna focus more so on the ingredients as well as what this product claims to do X versus what it actually does all right, so the first thing you want to do when you look at a product when you go into the store is look at what it claims that it will do for your hair. For this product, and when you look at the beginning of it, it says it's super smooth and rich. They claim that it's the best wave forming pomade. It builds, creates, holds, defines. The more you train, the more waves you get. That's kind of what's said at the bottom below, you know. I would say this is probably the best wave forming pomade when it comes to cheap products. I wouldn't say it's the best overall because there are way better products out there, natural products. They do a better job at it. I don't like when it comes to these build creates, holds, and defines. The whole builds thing, you build your waves by brushing your hair. You don't build your waves by products. Products don't create waves either. Now, this product does have great hold and it also helps define your waves simply because of the fact that it has that hold to it. But, but, but everything else that it mentions is kind of like it. it's for marketing purposes. Oh, uh, it goes on to say protein and amino acid fortified for serious wave training power. Now, that's one thing to consider because if you are if your hair is very sensitive when it comes to protein, you don't want to put a product that has a lot of protein in it. So let's jump into the back. On the back of this, as you can see, it gives you the directions of what you can do, of how to put it in your hair and everything. If you can't read it, it says work a small amount between your hands to loosen the product. You can add a small amount of water if desired. Work through your hair and brush vigorously. I believe one of the things that, that, that goes into the marketing effect of uh, builds and creates is because they state brush vigorously. Anybody that's a waver or knows how to get waves know that in order for you to build or create waves, you have to brush your hair a lot, you know? So because they state that in the directions, I would see why they will put that on the front of the cover. The next thing you want to understand is whenever you look at the ingredients, whatever is listed first means that it has more of that product in it and whatever is listed the last means that it has less of that product in it you know so when you read from left to right whatever comes first is more dominant and so on so keep that in mind when you go out there and you buy your products because you want to take in consideration how much of an ingredient that it has in there now with product labeling in America unlike food you know when you look on the back of a product label for food it'll tell you the percentages of the fats the carbs the sugars etc etc when it comes to skincare or products like this hair care they don't have to put the percentages of the products that, that are actually in there. So you really don't know how much of a percentage something is, but that's just something to keep in mind. Now, I'm gonna jump straight into it uh, just to explain some of this stuff for you guys. All right, so the first thing that it includes is petrolatum. Uh, some people, you can, that, that word is interchanged between petroleum or and they can spell petroleum a, a different ways, you know, but petroleum is mainly a product that is used to seal. Petroleum has been around for years. This is one of the biggest reasons why wave builder gets bad because it's the first ingredient on their products and most of their products not all of their products but most of their products it's the first ingredient used so that means that there's more petroleum in the product than the other ingredients 
The reason why a lot of people tend to have this concern is because of the effects that petroleum can have in your hair if you don't understand its role. The reason why petroleum is included is because petroleum acts as a sealant. Basically what that means is once you moisturize your hair, what you want to do is be able to seal in, seal your hair strands so that the moisture will stay in your hair. When it comes to having healthy hair, if your hair is not moisturized, it'll look dry, it'll look brittle. So petroleum is a great ingredient to add into products when it comes to cheap products like this because that's what it does. It just simply seals in the moisture that your hair is trying to retain. All right, so the next thing I want to mention, people tend to use this phrase a lot, which simply says, if you can't pronounce the ingredients on the back of a product label, you shouldn't be using it. But that type of thinking is very elementary, you know, because depending on your age, as well as your level of education, you may not be able to pronounce certain words. That's like telling a little kid just because they can't pronounce peanut butter and jelly, they shouldn't eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of stupid, you know, so. The more you know and the more you can actually understand certain things. So the, the, the rest of the ingredients that I'm about to go into, the pronunciations may be a little difficult, but that doesn't mean that just because you can't pronounce something, you shouldn't use it. So the next thing that comes up in the list is this thing called ozokerite. Ozokerite helps the emulsions from separating from a liquid into a, a oil substance. You know, so when it comes to certain products, they use emulsifiers and what emulsifiers do is it takes a liquid like water and oil and allows them to be combined together to create a cream. Ozokerite simply acts as an aid to make sure that that oil and water bond doesn't separate, you know, so when you go into the product, it doesn't look like there's a lot of water on top and there's a lot of just cl uh, clunky, just dry stuff at the bottom, you know, so Ozokerite also helps hold all the other ingredients together within the product. So that's one of the reasons why they probably put Ozokerite into uh, the cocoa and shea pomade. So the third ingredient is what they called microcrystalline wax. Well, microcrystalline wax serve as is a viscosity agent, a binder, and emollient. That's kind of what I mentioned earlier with the ozokerite. Uh, 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 the microcrystalline wax serves to bring those liquids and uh, the, the oils and the liquids in the product together so that they don't separate and then the ozokerite holds them together. All right, so the fourth ingredient in, in the product is what they call lanolin. Lanolin is used as a moisturizer to treat dry, itchy, scaly, uh, irritated skin. It serves as an emollient substance to help soften and moisturize the skin as well as decrease itching and flaking. Now one thing about lanolin that a lot of people may not know is that lanolin can also cause irritation in your skin depending on the type of skin that you have. Because we're all not the same, some people have allergies to different products or different ingredients, you know, so that's just something to keep in mind about lanolin. I'll go in more detail towards the end. The next ingredient is probably something that'll make you turn your head, but is simply called C12-15 Acyl Benzoate. This product provides a light conditioning and silky touch to the skin. You know, so that's one of the reasons why they may have put this product, I mean, this ingredient into the product, product to soften and probably add a light conditioning to your hair. I may mess this up, but the next ingredient is called Phenol Trimethicone. And I did some notes just to make sure I didn't miss anything, but Phenol Trimethicone simply serves as it reduces the generation of foam when shaking. It it also enhances the appearance and feel of hair. By increasing hair body, suppleness, or sheen, or by improving the texture of hair that has been damaged physically or by chemical treatment. Phenol trimethicone sl slows the loss of water from the skin by forming a barrier on the skin surface. So after reading that, that may be an ingredient where it sounds like you can't pronounce it or whatever, so why would you put it in there? But when you read the purpose that it serves, you will see that that's not a bad ingredient. Like you can see, you'll see why they will put that into the product. All right, so the next ingredient I may not pronounce this wrong right either, but it is Buterosperum Park. And if this sounds weird, don't be uh, shocked. What this simply means is shea butter. You know, a lot of people put shea butter in their products, but when it comes to product labels, you have to be able to provide the scientific name for the ingredient. So that's another thing to keep in mind is sometimes if you read through the product labels, they're the scientific names of the ingredients, you know, and not the actual layman terms means. But when it comes to shea butter, shea butter works as an emotion. It might help to soften or smooth dry skin. Shea butter also contains ingredients that can uh, minimize or decrease 
swelling in the skin. This might help treat certain conditions that people may have known as eczema, but that's one of the reasons why they would put the cocoa and the shea in the product. Now, Wave Builder, they have different types of pomades. This is the cocoa and shea pom pom pomade. So you can see why they have the shea butter in there, but that's enough of that. Okay, so the next ingredient is theocot. <laughs> The next ingredient is Theobrahma Gakko Seed Butter. And what that simply boils down to is cocoa butter. You know, a lot of people have been using cocoa butter for different purposes over the years to help uh, get rid of stress marks or dark marks in your skin. But to give the actual meaning of what cocoa butter does, it temporarily protects injured or exposed skin from harmful or annoying stimuli and may provide relief to the skin. It also slows the loss of water from your hair by providing a light barrier to the surface so that that goes hand in hand kind of with uh, most of the ingredients that they put into this pomade is as I as I mentioned the petroleum serves as a barrier the phenotrimethicone serves as a barrier so you can kind of see the point that I'm getting at. wave builder have put a lot of ingredients into this product to make sure that it pro pro provides a light barrier on your skin so that's something to keep in mind all right, so with the next ingredient, I'm gonna pull out my uh, handy dandy notebook, but uh, the next ingredient is what they call polysorbate 80. Now what polysorbate 80 does is, is used to help other ingredients dissolve in a solvent, in a solvent in which they normally would not dissolve, specifically in the case of oil and water. Now, if you wanna do a little something on your own, when you try to put oil into water, they don't blend, you know? So this product is something like an emulsifier. It can also help to reduce surface tension of substances that need to be emulsified, it is seen as a variety of formulas including skin fresheners, skincare products, skin cleansing products, makeup bases and foundations, shampoos and fragrance products as well as food products. So this ingredient is found all over. It is FDA approved based off a of reading that you can see kind of one of the reasons why they put it in there because they have waxes as well as different ingredients they may not be able to mix together. When you open up a product you don't want to see different layers of ingredients you know so they put these ingredients to help them blend all together. Now the next ingredient is when you get into the amino acids. The uh, first amino acid that they have is what they call collagen amino acid. Now collagen is something that your body produces, you know what I'm saying? It's when you're younger, your body produces collagen to make sure your skin looks smooth and clear and everything like that. But when it comes to your hair, the reason why they would probably put a collagen amino acid into the product, collagen amino acids reduce split ends, they uh, reduce the amount of frizz that your hair may have, they also help with breakage, they strengthen your hair, they're, they protect against heat and they nourish your hair and scalp. You know, so a collagen amino acid is something that you shouldn't be concerned about. This is more so an, an external application of the ingredient that your body naturally produces. All right, so the next amino acid is what we call keratin amino acids. Now, if you didn't know, keratin is naturally made in your body. Keratin is considered a hard protein. Keratin pr makes up about 90 to 95 percent of your hair strand. Naturally, its purpose is to serve as to make your heart, your your hair strong, and to strengthen the hair strand. Now, when it comes to natural production, this uh, ingredient can be made and produced through your body by a healthy diet, and can be nourished by following following a healthy care regimen or routine. Keratin amino acids isn't bad when it comes to applying it in the product. So that's one of the reasons why they probably put it into the pomade. All right, so the next ingredient that we're gonna talk about is the hydrolyzed barley protein. As you can see, we're getting more so into the protein section. Keratin and barley go hand in hand to help strengthen your hair strand. It's used for strength, shine, hydration, and to reduce breakage. Protein also temporary, temporarily helps repair your hair from damage by help filling in the gaps in your cuticle. That's one of the the reasons why sometimes you may need a protein treatment if you're protein sensitive too much protein can make your hair brittle and hard but that's just something to keep in mind whenever you're using certain products that have protein in it the good thing is that wave builder they state that in the beginning that it's protein and amino acids it's something to keep in mind protein also helps to keep the hair hydrated by slowing the loss of water from the hair all right so the next ingredient that's found into this pomade is the royal jelly extract now this ingredient is something that's found in nature it's actually a milky substance that bees produce you know so that's a fun little fact It's used as a tonic for the scalp to help encourage hair growth but since this one is more so lower 
at the bottom of the ingredient list. Uh, it's not something that you should be using for hair growth. The next protein and the last one is hydrolyzed wheat protein. Uh, what this simply serves is similar to the previous protein. It helps strengthen your hair strand. One thing to keep in mind is this ingredient helps to attract moisture to the hair strand and it improves its ability to maintain moisture. So that's something to keep in mind as well of one of the reasons why they probably put this ingredient into the product. All right, the next two ingredients, the first one is iron oxides. They're mainly for coloring, you know, so they put iron oxides into products. They've been used for years in the cosmetic industry ever since up to the 1900s, you know, so it's more so to serve as a coloring agent. Now, following up those iron oxides is mica. Now, when I was in school, like I told you, I studied civil engineering. When I took geology class, I learned about mica. Mica is a rock. It's more so a mineral from the earth. And what they typically use uh, mica for in the cosmetic industry is to give that sparkly white appearance uh, when it's applied, you know? So uh, one of the reasons why they probably will put that into a pomade is to give that sparkly effect on the hair. Uh, when you add that with petroleum, it really gives that, that the hair that kind of shiny, glossy look, you know? So that's one of the reasons why they put probably put mica into the product. All right, the second to last ingredient is titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide has been used to protect the skin from the sun. It more so serves to help prevent sunburn as well as prevent pre premature aging. So when you think about its applications in hair care, the first thing that sees the sun every single day is your head. By having titanium dioxide in a product like a pomade, you can see why they will put it in into the pomade because when the sun is beaming on your head, you want something to serve as a like a sunscreen or a barrier to prevent harmful effects from the sun. To get into the last ingredient, that's that's all I have to say about titanium dioxide, but to get into the last ingredient, the last ingredient is simply what they call red 17. It's more so a coloring agent. I don't really have to go into detail about that. When it boils down to the reason why I chose to use this pomade, the number one reason, man, besides all of the scares that people try to have from the natural hair care industry, is the simple fact that there is a product label on the back. Second, it's cheap. The third reason is simply because it does what it says it's gonna do. It holds my hair and it helps define my hair because of the ingredients that it has. Now, now one of the things that typically happens is between this whole natural versus unnatural debate, people tend to bash unnatural products or whatever the case is. Is. But one thing I do want to say that I appreciate about Wave Buddha products is the fact that they have a product label, you know, so they, they give consumers something to find out, you know. So the purpose of this video is more so to teach you guys how to read product labels if you don't know. But whenever I apply it to my head, one thing you got to keep in mind is because there's so many ingredients that create a protective layer on your hair, you want to make sure that you get as much moisture into your hair before you apply something like a a pomade, a wave, a wave builder pomade, simply because if you don't, then what's gonna happen is that protective layer won't allow moisture from the outside to get in. So if you wash your hair, you won't be, your hair won't get as moisturized, you know? So I make sure I do a rigorous method. I normally do an OMB method. Shout out to Renard, Wavy Crockett. You know, he came up with the idea of the OMB method. That's something that helps my hair seal in moisture. But at the end of it, when I, when I first started training my hair to get waves, I only put this pomade in the crown of my hair. The reason why people tend to say that oh man this stuff causes you to break out and get bumps and stuff like that or whatever the case is. The reason that can happen is not because of petroleum. People tend to think that petroleum is the cause for everything. The reason why I've learned I get bumps on my head is because of the lanolin in it. You know so lanolin when applied to my hair does what it needs to do but because the, 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 the skin cells in my scalp are different from the skin cells on my face whenever anything like lanolin gets in my face because petroleum is acting as a sealant it seals in my for whatever reason my skin my, my facial skin is allergic to lanolin so by adding petroleum on top of it it seals in that lanolin and what it does is my skin is trying to get rid of it but because it can't it gets locked into my skin and you get these bumps on your forehead or whatever the case is so for me when I use this product I make sure I only apply it in my crown so therefore when I brush by the time I get to the, the front part of my hair the 
product isn't reaching all the way through. If you apply the pomade all the way through your hair and brush, what may happen is when you sweat or when you brush, some of the product will get right here and then when it sweats and drips down or whatever the case is, whether if you're sleeping overnight, you're working out, or if you even, even if you're at work, it will create that barrier with those ingredients that serve as an allergen to your skin. So you'll see these bumps that'll form, especially at the line of a do-rag, you know? So that's something to keep in mind. But for me, like I said in the beginning of the video, I stand by this word why I said it's the best wave forming pomade. But I want to add that disclaimer that it's the best wave forming pomade when it comes to cheap products. You know, like you can find this product almost in any Walmart or any store. At the end of the day, there are better alternatives. I'm not bashing natural hair care products. But one thing that I don't see is a product label when I buy the products, you know, so I don't know if what I'm getting is actually what they're saying, you know, so that's something to keep in mind. The sad truth is some people will tell you that it's all natural just so that they can sell it to you. Wave Builder is one of those companies. They have some natural product uh, that they have on their product line, but they're not all natural, you know? So natural is a term that is used nowadays because people see that people will be more willing to spend more money for a natural hair product, but they don't really understand. They don't think it through that they're not getting a product label. So they don't know what they're actually putting into their head, you know? So if you don't know, if you're not the one making it, and you're buying it from somebody else that's just something to keep in mind i'm not telling you not to buy it but 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 when it comes to saving your money and getting the most bang for your buck the cheapest pomade that i've ever bought that's helped my waves go to the next level has been this wave builder cocoa and shade pomade all right so to kind of wrap this up the biggest concerns that people have against wave builder is petroleum i really can't go into all the details in the history what i can tell you is i've been doing my research to be able to provide a more thorough video using this product like i mentioned i only put it in my crown petroleum has been proven and been used over the years for medical reasons for things like that i'm not concerned with the fear mongering that tends to go on when people are promoting natural uh, hair products and stuff like that. Uh, for me, I'm not being sponsored from Wave Builder. I'm not being sponsored from natural hair care products. You know, so therefore, I feel like I can be a lot more honest in my approach. But at the end of the day, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this guy, I hope this video also allowed you to understand how to read product labels and what you should do when you go out to buy certain products for your hair. For me, I'm gonna stick with using the Wave Builder Cocoa, uh, the Cocoa and Shade Pomade until I run out of it. But if you have a, a protein sensitive hair condition or whatever the case is you may not want to use these products just because of the simple fact that they have a lot of proteins in them but it's your boy jay lou appreciate you guys watching this video if it helped you out make sure you give it a thumbs up like i said i'm gonna keep trying to drop these videos to help you guys out but y'all be blessed hope y'all have a great day salute